The last white spots have practically disappeared from the map of our planet, and the most mysterious places have turned into popular resorts. But there are exceptions to this rule. When the sun sets, a tall silhouette of the Earth looms on the horizon above Kikahunt Beach on the island of Kauai. For most residents of the state, this is the only way to see Nihau Island. It is as if it was created to attract tourists. But despite this, the island is a forbidden territory, which no stranger can set foot on. Nihau is the smallest inhabited island of the Hawaiian archipelago. Its area is slightly less than 180 square kilometers, and the length of the territory from north to south is 25 kilometers. It is unique in many ways and not least, thanks to its amazing history. But before I talk about it in more detail, we will be transported to Scotland at the turn of the 18th and 19th centuries. In 1800, a girl was born in a family of merchants from Glasgow, who was named Elizabeth. At that time it was impossible to imagine what role she would play in the history of the Hawaiian Islands. By the age of 24, Eliza had grown into a beautiful woman, married Francis Sinclair, an experienced navigator and ship captain. The family grew rapidly and by 1841 they had six children. It was then that the Sinclair family went in search of a new life in New Zealand. They eventually settled in Pigeon Bay, where they built a farm that brought a steady income. Everything was going well, and the new place seemed like a dream home, but soon tragedy struck. Eliza's husband and her eldest son George disappeared at sea in 1846 during a business trip to Wellington. They were carrying all the family's money and groceries. After the disappearance of her husband and son, Eliza and her children remained living in Pigeon Bay. It was not easy for a woman to become the head of a family to support five children in an unfamiliar country, but there was no way out and she plunged into business with her head. And she succeeded in this and was able to save a small fortune to buy a ship, which Bessie named. As the years passed, the children began to start their own families. The Sinclair clan, numbering more than 35 people, needed more land. Then Eliza makes a bold decision to move to Canada. After selling all the property, part of the family set off on their own ship. Dissatisfied with the conditions found on Vancouver Island, they thought of California. But an acquaintance named Henry Rose recommended Eliza to go to the Sandwich Islands, the current Hawaiian Islands, instead. So Sinclair did, and at the age of 63, Eliza brought 13 members of her family to Hawaii. Arriving in Honolulu Harbor on September 17, 1863, 300 tons of Iborg arrived fully provided with merino sheep, one cow, hay, grain, chickens, a piano, books, and clothes. Eliza liked Hawaii at first sight, and she decided to stay here for a long time. Elizabeth managed to win over Kamehameha IV, the then ruler of the archipelago. The monarch's sympathy was so great that he offered Elizabeth to buy several islands and plots from him at once, but however, as practice has shown, Behind this was rather a desire to get rid of the problematic land. As a result, the widow bought the island of Nihau for $10,000. But before that, Miamia IV put forward one condition. He said there may come a day when Hawaiians won't be as strong in Hawaii as they are now. When that day comes, please do your best to help them. The deal was completed by his brother, who took the throne, as Kamehameha IV soon died of chronic asthma. The inhabitants of the island, known as Nihons, were allowed to stay, but access to the island for outsiders had already become limited, only occasionally some immigrants were allowed to stay, as there were not enough workers. So the island went to the Sinclairs and their current descendants, the Robinsons. Nihau has been in the possession of this family for more than 150 years. The Sinclair family has started a new life on an exotic island. They built a big house on the west coast of Nihau their ranch. 
They treated the locals with respect and tried to improve their lives. Many locals, in turn, worked on the Sinclair farm, they were satisfied with this order. They welcomed the changes brought by the new owners of the island. Soon Elizabeth was elected chief of the indigenous population of the island of Nihau. But in the first year, Eliza realized why it was easy enough for them to sell such a large island. When the Sinclairs first saw Nihau, the island was lush and green and seemed like an ideal place to create a ranch. The king of Hawaii apparently didn't tell them that the island had endured two years of unusually wet weather. It turned out that Nihau was located in the rain shadow of the Kauai Island, located 28 kilometers away, and receives much less precipitation. The drought on Nihau was so severe that the locals had to leave it for years until the rains resumed. This has happened in modern times, when the drought turned around, it became obvious that the invested funds may be unjustified. But fortunately Elizabeth Sinclair still had a lot of gold and in the 1870s she bought more than 8,000 hectares of land on Kauai, which the family turned into a sugar cane plantation. This allowed the Sinclairs to stay afloat. Since then, most of the time they lived on the island of Kauai, where they also built a house with a view of the ocean and Nihau. At the same time, they carried out constant monitoring of the island and regularly visited it. A few decades later, in 1893, the Hawaiian monarchy ceased to exist after the intervention of the American government. While the Americans were trying to impose statehood on the Hawaiian islands, the cultures and traditions of these islands began to disappear. But Nihau Island did not open its gates to outsiders. Although Elizabeth had already passed away by that time, she died at the age of 92. The Sinclairs managed to prevent the American government from entering the island, since it was private property, and the family tried their best to keep everything as it was. In 1915, Aubrey Robinson, the grandson of the brave Elizabeth, decided to stop communicating with the outside world. It is said that in this way he wanted to preserve local customs and protect the aborigines from the corrupting influence of civilization. If this is really the case, then the idea was a success. Nihau is the only island in the archipelago where the original Hawaiian way of life has been preserved. Hawaiian remained the main language of the population. Later, Robinson did not allow phones and radios to be carried out on Nihau. Firearms, alcohol and tobacco have fallen under the taboo. Communication with the neighboring island of the inhabitants of Nihau was maintained with the help of bonfires and fires from kerosene burners. Also, the closeness of the island helped during the polio epidemic in Hawaii in 1952, since no cases of infection were registered on Nihau. Surprisingly, a small remote island left a noticeable mark in the history of the Second World War. The Japanese considered Nihau uninhabited, so it was chosen as a place for an emergency landing for aircraft damaged after the famous attack on Pearl Harbor. In the future, it was planned to evacuate the pilots on submarines, and the residents of Nihau, who in 1941 did not have a radio, simply did not know about the defeat of the American fleet and the beginning of a great war. One of the Japanese pilots reached the island on his damaged Zero and made an emergency landing here. There are several versions of further events. According to one of them, the pilot managed to collude with three local residents, descendants of Japanese immigrants. The conspirators demanded the return of the documents seized from the pilot during landing and took several hostages. The islanders refused. After that, during the struggle, the pilot was killed by local residents, and one of the conspirators committed suicide. The U.S. military arrived and detained his accomplices. This incident had serious consequences, the trust of U.S. citizens in Japanese Americans was undermined. More than a hundred thousand of them were sent to special camps until the end of the war 
and the event on a small Hawaiian island entered the annals under the name of the incident in Nihau. According to historians, decisions about the internment of the Japanese were largely made with an eye to this case. Only decades later, President Ronald Reagan apologized to the Japanese Americans for such repression. Today Nihau is owned by Keith and Deuce Robinson. Apparently, they fully share the philosophy of their ancestor and try to minimize the number of strangers on the island because they are only one trouble. The island seems to have remained something like a living fossil, a glimpse of what life on the islands might look like if it were not for outside interference in the affairs of the archipelago. The population of Nihau according to the 2010 census was 170 people, however, depending on the season, these figures vary, since modern islanders often travel to neighboring islands and are not limited in this. It turns out that Nihau is isolated for everyone, but for them this house, which they can visit freely. Also, access is allowed to representatives of the Robinson family and random invited guests, whom it is almost impossible to become. So once even the governor of Hawaii himself was not allowed here, but however, there is one way by which you can set foot on the land of the Forbidden Island. However, I will tell you about it a little later. The only settlement of Nihau is the village of Kubai with several dozen houses. Almost all of the population belongs to the indigenous people of the Hawaiian archipelago. Most of the inhabitants of Nihau live by fishing, hunting and farming, selling shells and jewelry from them. A small part receives state benefits. Also, many leave to work on the nearest islands. The Robinson Farm is no longer functioning. It was closed in 1999, but they still continue to support and provide for the residents of Nihau, facilitate trade in their handicrafts and make great efforts to protect endangered flora and fauna. There are no paved roads on the island, no power lines, solar energy provides all the electricity. You can forget about shops and hotels here, and food and industrial goods are delivered.